first to trouble in Rishi Sunak's ranks as more than 50 Tory backbenchers prepare to defy the Prime Minister and vote against his flagship smoking ban. The controversial tobacco and vapes bill would bar anyone born after 2009 from buying cigarettes ever in a move branded unconservatives by critics. Well, to make matters worse for number 10, Kemi Badenoch has confirmed she'll be voting against the smoking ban. The bill will be put to a free vote. That means the usual collective responsibility that binds ministers will not apply. Meanwhile, Penny Mordaunt is also rumoured to be voting against it. The two front benches are, of course, both tipped for a future Tory leadership bid, meaning their political manoeuvres could fuel concerns the bill is illiberal, and in the words of Boris Johnson, nuts. Earlier, the Health Secretary, Victoria Atkins, kicked off the debate in the Commons with a passionate defence of the policy. For a moment, if I may, Mr Deputy Speaker, I would like us to imagine that we're not in this historic and magnificent chamber, but we are instead standing at the entrance of a local hospital. A patient comes through the doors, struggling to breathe. Smoking sent their asthma spiralling out of control. A minute later, another patient passes by. Smoking caused the heart disease they're battling. A minute later, another person comes in, and then another. This vicious cycle repeats itself nearly every minute of every day in our national health system. Because here in the United Kingdom, almost one hospital admission a minute is the human cost of smoking. Well, I'm sure Victoria Atkins believes in this uh, policy, but I don't think many Conservatives do. I find myself agreeing with Boris Johnson, which doesn't happen very often. I think it's a completely nuts piece of policy. It, it's deeply illiberal, it's deeply unconservative. The idea that in a few years' time you'll get a 27-year-old walking into, or, you know, standing in a dock with a magistrate saying, we're accusing you of trying to buy a packet of fags and you're not 27 and a half or whatever, it's just daft. And I can sort of see that Rishi Sunak thinks this is going to be his legacy. And there are those who thought that the Labour Party was going to do it anyway, so they might as well pinch the Labour's you know, Labour Party's toys and do it, and that young people don't really smoke anyway, and that the old people who do vote Conservative will still be able to smoke. Even putting all of that into the pot of reasons to do it, it still makes no sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, this was... New Zealand were the pioneers of this. They brought this really? in. Uh, well, and then it went out again with a change of government because they looked at it and said, well, this is clearly palpably ridiculous. It can't, it can't work at this level. Everybody knows you don't want people young kids to smoke. And by the way, Boris Johnson, sugar tax, Boris, you loved a bit of sugar tax, mate. He was fine with that, but for some reason, because it ain't his idea. Look, this is just not the way to do it. That's the, the bottom line here. The more fundamental point, just finally, is that this is about Rishi's legacy. Rwanda yeah. isn't going to work. All the other bits and pieces he's tried to put together isn't going to work. The NHS waiting list he can't put, he needs something to put his name to. And if it happens to be pina colada flavoured vapes getting banned, He's all right with that, because he was the bloke what did it. Yeah, I don't think... When people like, Daisy, you're saying about, oh, someone who's 27 can't buy it, but someone who's 28 can. Well, currently, the 17-year-olds... So someone who's 17 years old and 300 days can't buy alcohol, but someone who's just over 18 can buy alcohol. Yes, but in six months' time, they will be able to buy alcohol. That's, yep. that's the ludicrousness of this policy. I, I, that, I so that, a 40 that individual... year old would be ID'd in a tobacconist. Anyone, and anyone who looks under 25 is, is ID'd by law. That's what it's supposed to be. If you, it's challenge well, 25. But a 50-year-old would get ID'd. Yes. Yeah, and, 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 yes, yes eventually, eventually that would be the case. But everyone who's able to smoke now would still be able to smoke. A 60-year-old would be ID'd. <laughs> I yes. keep going. Yes, yes, eventually. But I don't, see, I don't see a problem with it. It's bad. It's very, very bad for you. I get, oh, just like China or North Korea, I can't do what we want. I get that, well, but, it, but, but, it, but, it is, but it is. They yeah. do, but it is very, very bad for you. And I don't think it's wrong to then discourage my kids from smoking cigarettes. But I think that there are different ways to do it. And I think the different point is, we it. all know cigarette smoking is bad. We all know that we need to remove it. We all know that if it was invented today, we would ban it. Um, but the, prob the problem is that it's the way that this policy is implemented which makes it so ridiculous. So first of all, they say, oh, look at all the money that we would save on the NHS if, uh, if we didn't have smoking-related disease. Well, first of all, let's look at the tax that cigarette smoking raises. 10.5 billion in tax. It costs the NHS 17.5 yeah, billion. Yeah, I know, but you're not including 
thing that the fact that somebody dies earlier, and I'm sorry to say this, but if you die earlier, you're costing the NHS less. So we've got people who are living longer, who are costing the NHS That's more true. and the care more and all that sort of stuff. So let's do the numbers properly. The second point is that the way that this would be implemented is ridiculous. That you would, if you, even if you have the ID thing and that works, then what do you do? You have people who are older, who are going in, legitimately able to go and buy cigarettes, and they bring them in and, they, and then they go and sell them on the black market to the people who want them who yeah. are younger. I'm sorry, this is a nonsense, it's a waste of time, and if this is Rishi Sunak's legacy, then frankly, he's made a complete horse mess of everything else, and this is another one. Well, you've all put it so beautifully. I have nothing to add except that Horse it's mess. Unnecessarily, <laughs> unnecessarily complicated. It also raises the question, why don't we ban alcohol as well? Because that causes horrendous health mm. harms and, you know, social, social harms issues, as well. Yeah. Social issues massively. Um, what, you know, what are we going to ban next? You know, chocolate, all the I'm... nice things that make life pleasurable. I still miss smoking. I speak as an ex-smoker. I'd never go back to it. I wouldn't want my child to smoke. Completely agree with you all on that but this is really not the way to do it. Be and, bold, ban it completely. And, and so all the evidence does prove to, or, or point to James's point, that there will just be a massive new black market of bootleggers who will be bringing mm. them in from abroad. And, uh, you know, and the fact that Labour's going to vote for it, that's another part of this, because I think it's just political. They just want to be doing... So, you know, the Tories want to be doing something that they know, or Rishi Sunak, that he knows will get yep. through and, as you said, will be his legacy.